supreme divine reality. Reality is the supreme. The recently released miraculous Tales of Shadybug and Claw Noir has left fans of the series with burning questions that they're desperate to find answers for. One of this special's mysteries concerned the Kwame of reality, Gimme, and why she failed to appear when the alternate version of Marinette combines the Ladybug and Cat Miraculous. Although the special takes place after the episode Destruction, it isn't released until after the season finale Recreation, where Gimme receives a complete introduction to the narrative of Miraculous Ladybug. That introduction is where the confusion arises. In Recreation, Gabriel successfully summons Gimme and has his wish granted. However, in the special, Tiki and Plague are prevented from unifying under Shadybug's command due to the interference of a faceless villain, referred to as the Supreme. Since Gimme appeared as such a prominent and cosmic being, it is hard to imagine anyone having such assertive control over them. That's why in today's video, we're considering how the Supreme kept Gimme from revealing themselves. I am Gimme, the Kwame of reality. I am everything that was, is, and will be. The beginning of the new special orients the protagonist, Betterfly, and his enemies, Shadybug and Claw Noir, as survivors of an already doomed world. In this alternate universe, an evil and malicious entity known as the Supreme uses the power of the Miraculouses to control his parallel universe. According to the good Gabriel, he would sometimes lend out Miraculouses to people he trusted to help him achieve his goals. The most recent examples are Shadybug and Claw Noir who are assisting the Supreme in retrieving the Butterfly Miraculous. Although very little information about the Supreme appears in the special, he is where this theory begins. The sheer amount of power he has over his world comes from all the Miraculouses he can wield. However, his distinct control over Gimme becomes a concern because when Shadybug tries to summon the Kwame of reality, the Supreme doesn't have control of the Ladybug or Cat Miraculouses. The question which then arises is, how did he cast a seal on Tiki and Plague to prevent them from unifying? One of the most interesting theories is that the Supreme may be the mage who originally created the Miraculouses in his universe. In the main series, the Kwamis must obey their guardian and whoever currently wields their Miraculous. So within the realm of reason, the only person who could override these rules is the man who created them in the first place. There are only a few instances of the unnamed mage throughout the series. However, in the second volume of Miraculous Adventures, a comic series based on Miraculous Ladybug, Master Fu, Waze, and Tiki shed some light on this mysterious man. According to the comic, Kwamis have existed since the beginning of the universe, and since they represent abstract ideas, a new one forms whenever a new concept, be that love, beauty, or mathematics, comes into existence. For many years, tangible creatures like humans could not see or interact with the Kwamis until the mage created the Miraculouses to wield each Kwami's power. These Miraculouses allow the Kwamis to help humanity bestow their powers and communicate with regular people. If the mage could connect the Kwamis to their Miraculous, he could likely control them like any other wielder. However, the probability of this theory lessens when we consider that the mage created the Miraculouses 5,000 years ago. The Kwamis predate humanity, and it's unlikely that a mere mortal could live for several centuries. However, with enough power, anything could be possible. The entire premise of the special revolves around opposite character tropes. The alternate Gabriel Agrest is good while Marinette and Adrian are evil. It's feasible that the mage of their universe was also a force of evil that made the Miraculouses for personal gain. A few things point to this possibility being true, such as the destruction of the alternate world's Paris and the seals preventing Tiki and Plague from speaking or unifying. If the mage created the Miraculouses, he may have unified the most powerful of them, the ladybug and the cat. At the same time, Gimme would reveal themselves to him, and he would have access to bend reality. Sorry, they may be open again. I can't hold them back for long. Run! You can't stay here. If we want the mage and the supreme to be the same person, it becomes possible with a single and simple wish granted by Gimme, the power of immortality. The mage could have wished for an extended life, one where he would live throughout history, creating more miraculouses, unveiling their secrets, and amassing power. A secondary wish, less feasible but still possible, could be that he wished for a way to harness Gimme's power. It would explain the seals preventing Tiki and Plague from unifying, and why Gimme failed to materialize altogether. There's also a line in the special that indicates that the Supreme may have taken Gimme's power, potentially absorbing it into himself. The line occurs when Shadybug attempts to summon Gimme, but the ritual is interrupted by a booming male voice, which states, only the Supreme defines reality. Reality is the Supreme. 
It's not uncommon for villains to monologue or to overplay their power. Hawk Moth does it at the end of every battle, claiming he has what it takes to defeat Ladybug and Cat Noir. However, if we take the Supreme's words at face value, he can defy and define reality at will, making him one of the most dangerous adversaries the heroes have faced. I would break a mirror if I were you. That's seven years of bad luck, you know. You think it'd be any different from how it is now? Guess what? Fortunately, this evidence still holds up the theory that the Mage and the Supreme are the same. If the Supreme can change reality at will, he can also prevent himself from aging, becoming ill, or receiving significant wounds that could harm him. He would be invincible, not to mention how he would be perfectly capable of controlling the Kwamis, as he does during the special. Additionally, if the Supreme has amassed control of reality, destroying his universe has taken a long time. In the special, we only see modern Paris under siege, with Betterfly doing everything he can to right the Supreme's wrongs. We know that the Supreme wants the Miraculouses Gabriel stole from him, the Butterfly and the Peacock to be returned. However, his goals afterward remain a complete mystery. At the end of the special, the alternate versions return to their universe to continue their battle against the Supreme. The ending of the special insinuates a potential happy ending for this new cast of characters. However, with their world falling into ruin and an enemy with so much power, it's hard to imagine how they could win that fight, even with three Miraculouses and the Resistance to aid them. Cataclysm. Lucky charm. <laughs> The Supreme doesn't seem to possess the ability to take the Miraculouses from them. If so, he would have recovered the Butterfly Miraculous already. That is likely the hero's sole advantage, as with the power of reality on his side, the Supreme is a force to be reckoned with. It almost seems like he's turned Gimme into his personal Kwame, making him the strongest Miraculous wielder ever. If that's the case, the Supreme's goal could be to gain as much power as possible, no matter which world it may be. At the beginning of the special, Tiki tells Marinette that the Kwamis exist in multiple parallel worlds simultaneously. The way she explains the situation, it sounds like all Kwamis have a connection to their alternative counterparts, in some way. As a Kwame, Gimme would not be an exception to this rule, meaning they and the Supreme could have a connection to other universes. The special gives more than one example of Miraculouses establishing this connection. Butterfly and Monarch find ways to travel through different worlds using the Butterfly Miraculous and the Rooster Miraculous. The Butterfly Miraculous simply transmits the ability to travel to other universes to Marinette or Alia, while the Rooster Miraculous grants Gabriel the ability to move through universes with sublimation. With more power than any other Kwame, Gimme should be capable of moving someone through worlds like Nuru and Oriko. If so, then no universe is safe from the Supreme. If his ultimate goal happens to be complete control over his universe and every other, then those alternate places will soon face his wrath. It won't be long until he comes face to face with Mr. Bug and Lady Noir, Scarabella and Kitty Noir, and Ladybug and Cat Noir. It's like your lucky charms. They never make any sense, but they work every time. He's right. Miraculous World Paris doesn't tell us much about the tales of Shadybug and Claw Noir, although it's clear that their stories are much darker and more complex than anything our token heroes, Ladybug and Cat Noir, have faced so far. Gimme still remains a mystery in the main series, as their screen time remains limited to the time it took to grant Gabriel's final wish. However, with the special leaving loose ends and room for a sequel, Gimme can return alongside the evil supreme force who controls them. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our uploads. Hi, little human. How are things going? going for you? Say, what year is it, huh? I want to make a wish.